Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum, the dynamic backcourt of the Portland Trailblazer. Man, first of all, thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate you having me, brother. C.J. McCollum, what's going on, man? Pleasure to be in your presence, Mr. Oh, man, like, well, likewise. Portland Trailblazers on one of the hottest teams in the league right now. You look at the roster from top to bottom, and there's a lot of names that probably an average fan wouldn't know about. How are you able to get to this point right now? Uh, over the last three years, we've um, developed a, a great level of chemistry. Guys have done a great job getting better each summer. Uh, you know, I think our assistants do a great job with our, our player development. So um, it's not like just going through meaningless workouts. You know, it's coming off flares and pin downs. There's a lot of stuff um, incorporated in workouts that is a part of our offense and a part of the way we play. So um, people can come in and impact the game and get comfortable through their workouts, um, a lot of film. and. Uh, we got a lot of faith in each other. I think we show trust in each other, and uh, we lean on each other. And you know, in the past, we hadn't done that as much as we have been lately. Um, and also, uh, our commitment to the defensive end. I yeah. think we're a much better defensive team. So um, it's allowed us to win a lot more games so far. Which is surprising, CJ. I mean, you talk about defense. You guys, there's been a lot of talk about this being a small backcourt. You know, you guys both six three. You know, you, typically you don't play six, three guys, you know, in both spots. How are you guys being able to sustain such a high level of defense, you know, with the, I guess you want to say, lack of height and length at that position? I think it's just understanding the schemes a little bit better. Uh, the coaches do a great job of preparing us uh, each day, uh, working on the scattering for us, working on the shell, figuring out how to help. And as I said before, like, this is my third year of playing as a starter, full-time minutes. Uh, my fifth year in the league, I didn't play as much my first couple years. I was hurt and things of that nature, so I think you, you better understand how to shortcut certain plays, you understand personnel a little bit better, and the more you play, the more you learn on the fly. And I think it was an effort thing, it was a summer thing of working, working on angles, working on how to guard post-ups, and I think we've all gotten better collectively as a unit and more comfortable together. And I always say the best defense is offense. If you can attack somebody and wear them down, you know, offensively, then when you get on the defensive end, they're going to be a little bit more tired. We obviously are not talking about the Portland Trailblazers without the contributions of you guys, but it was a process of getting you guys to this point. There was a time where, Dame, where you were the, one of the key players around a bunch of veterans. CJ, you were on the bench, was getting, you know, collecting some DMPs. You were hurt earlier on in your career. What started the process of you guys meshing? I, I think the, the best part about it is it was just, it was organic. We didn't um, seek each other out uh, once he got drafted and, and tried to go from there. I think we come from similar situations as far as going to a small school, yeah. um, having to carry a load for um, our college teams, uh, being high draft picks, and you know we had the same injury in college. And that was actually when we first um, got in touch with each other because I had, I broke my foot in college and he did the same thing. Um, and then we got in contact because I was kind of sharing how I dealt with it and what I did to kind of bounce back uh, following that injury. And from that point on, we just kept in contact. And um, eventually we became teammates and it, it made it easier because we didn't have to you know, try to force anything. And um, from day one, we sat next to each other on the plane. We was working out together and, and stuff like that. So I think that just made it a lot easier once it came to the point where you know, we were the ones leading the team. Well, what was it like for you, CJ, going through that process? Because when you first came in the league, it didn't look like there was going to be a door open for right. you to be in a position you are now. Right, no, it's a humbling experience just going through injuries, like I said before, and he, he said, fractured foot my senior year. Mm -hmm. After going back to school, it's a, it's a tough pill to swallow. You know, your, your dreams and aspirations are all on the line and you don't know your future. So just kind of asking him about the rehab process, asking him how he recovered and how long it took. And then next thing you know, I'm getting drafted to Portland Trailblazers. Mm -hmm. And I had already known him for you know a year or so, haven't, haven't met him through text messages and stuff like that, and, and meeting him at the draft lottery and then working out and then fracturing my foot again. So it's mm -hmm. like, wow, that's two times in a year I'm not playing. And then we win 54 games. Mm -hmm. Like we, we have, we go from lottery team mm -hmm. to top four in the West. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a young player, it's hard to kind of find your way when mistakes are amplified. You're on a bad team, you can make mistakes and nothing happens. You're on a good team in the Western Conference, every, every game is that much more important. And your coach has less tolerance for error. So I come in, I don't remember a play, or I mess up a defense yeah. assignment, and everything is him yeah, coming out, <laughs> and he's just looking at me like, see, like you ain't ready, you know what I'm saying? So having to go through that, 
And then the DMPs, and then the next year I fractured my index finger in my shooting hand. Then we trade for Aaron to follow. It was just like everything kept happening over and over again. I was like, eventually I'm gonna get a chance, and when I do, I'm just not gonna look back. I'm gonna make sure I be aggressive and and do, it, do whatever it takes to, to stay on the court and prove I belong. A lot of players, they say that. You know, I'm waiting for my chance. I'm, I'm going to get that chance eventually. But for some players, that chance never never comes. Did, did, did that ever? It did, uh, man. It, I used to think all the time. Dame used to see me in there looking angry every day, looking, <laughs> <laughs> looking real angry because I don't, I don't really hold stuff in well. Yeah. So just looking mad, like, dang, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to play or if, I, if, if this is the right situation for me because – you know, you're happy with the team success, but as a competitor individually, you just feel like, you know, when am I going to get a chance to, to help our team? And uh, going through injuries and then the team just being so good to where you got very good players in front of you. We had Nick Batum, Wesley Matthews, we had Mo Williams. It's like we had all these good veteran pieces in place to where, like, I, I couldn't complain because the guys in front of me were, were performing at a high level. So then it's just me and Will looking at each other every day, like, let's just play one on one, let's just get better, and then when we get our chance, we're going to eat. And I think that's kind of how we approached it. And, our staff did a great job of developing and staying in my ear and kind of, you know, helping me work on little things, little aspects of the game to kind of separate me from, from other players. And as, as the season prog progressed, I just watched Dame. I worked out against him, worked out with him, and just tried to compete every day and, and, and figure, as my mom would say, you don't, you don't blow an opportunity by not playing. Mm -hmm. You blow an opportunity by not being ready to play when you get a chance. So I had a lot of mm -hmm. unknown, unknown work in front of me that I knew I put the work in, but no one had seen it. Most people had you pegged coming out of college as to, to be a point guard. And when you got drafted by Portland, obviously they, they had Dame at that position. And Dame, you were still, when he was going through his times of, of uncertainty, not knowing if he's going to play or whatnot, I know you were encouraging and telling him, like, why did you uh, feel like you need to, to, to do that in that situation? I think when people have a problem with other people that – you know, might be good at something or um, could be close to their level or on their level. Uh, and that's when you see, you know, insecurities come out. And for me, I'm 100% I'm confident in, in what I can do. Um, and I know that in this league, if you want to, if you really want to win, you're going to need other good players. You're going to need um, people that can dominate a game just like you can dominate a game. Uh, people that can be successful just like you can be successful, but that, I knew that it didn't take away um, who I am or what I bring to a team and, you know, what my impact could have been on CJ, you know, as a friend and as a teammate, um, I knew that could make our team better. You know, I wasn't looking at it like, oh, CJ nice too. And what if this happened or what if that happened? I mean, it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, but I, you know, I ain't no hater and I ain't, I, you know, I don't get jealous of other people's success. You know, I, I get happy for them. And I feel like when you do that, it, it's going to always come back to you. You know, and like, like he said, we had known each other for a while already. Um, and I, was, I would always tell him on a plane, you know, we're going to be in the backcourt together at some point. And, you know, we're going to have to do what we got to do. So, you know, I was always cheering for C. I was always cheering for Will Barton. You know, I, I wanted to see them get on the floor and get to do what they, what they do. And... Um, that's just who I am, you know. I'm, like I said, I know what I bring to the table um, as a person, as a leader, and as a as a player. So I was never, I never looked at it like um, like anybody was a threat or anything like that. I looked at it as how they could help the team um, or how they could help me make this um, a better franchise. What is something that you guys both, you know, contain in your arsenal, and what's something that you know each other has that the, that the other probably doesn't? I think just uh, having watched him for so many years, I, I even watched him at Weaver. My brother used to call me like, yo, this dude from Weaver State is a dog. Is that right? watch. So I used to watch his games. And How you watch a Weaver game? My brother had all the legal websites. <laughs> <laughs> all the legal I mean, he played overseas. No, I followed his stuff. Like, I, we was going back and forth leading the, the country and scoring. So, like, I was following his stuff, too. That's crazy. So you can just live stream. Yeah. Like, I had websites That's for days to where I just live stream. And I remember I turned it off. Like, I was live streaming his game, and it was up 20 or something like that. I turned it off. I was like, oh, he about to get a chip. Turned it off, started doing something. The brother called me like, yo, they lost. <laughs> I was like, bro, that's crazy. So I have been, I've been watching for a long time. So I've seen how his game has kind of transformed. And I think his ability to finish, finish through contact has improved, just breaking down film, seeing his, his pick and roll play, his ability to finish through contact. Obviously, he's got floaters, quick lays. He's got, he's got a lot of different uh, finishes in the lane. And then I think his... 
his uh, passing. I think he's a very good passer, underrated passer, his ability to hit the weak side. Something I've been trying to work on for three years now. I'm getting better at it slowly, but I'm inconsistent at hitting the role replace guy. That's the shot that a lot of point guards are able to are able to make, you know, off balance, either going left or going right. And you see John and a lot of those guys make those passes on role replace, and it's easy assist if you got a shooter rolling out the corner. How were you guys been able to complement one another on the court? Because from outside looking in, it, it you know it seems like man those two point guards in the backcourt, but you look at where you guys are ranked with the top point guard duos, you guys are right there. Clay Thompson, Stephen Curry, John Wall, Bradley Beal. I mean, I, Damian Lillard. I think it's, it's, it's not that hard because we can do a lot of the same things. Like he can create a shot off the bounce, he can make a play. He can shoot off pin downs. So if he can play off the ball and I can play off the ball, it's like if I got it going, then he know that if I come off and people come to me and he open, he know I'm going, I'm going to pass on the ball. And vice versa. If he got it going like he did in Chicago, I'm going to keep, keep giving it to him. But the fact that we're interchangeable, I think that, that makes it um, easy to, to work with. Um, you know, if it was like he can score the ball like he can score the ball, but he couldn't shoot the way he could, then it would be a little bit harder. Yeah. But the fact that we can both come off screens and shoot the ball, we can both come off pick and rolls and score and make plays. Um, when I get hot, he respect that I'm hot. He don't try to go out there and get hot with me. <laughs> and when he hot, I don't try to go out there and get hot too. And Y'all both can't be hot at the same time? We can, but, but it'll, it'll happen that way. Like, okay. that's why I say, like, if I hit a couple, like, if I hit a couple shots and they start sending bodies to me, like, we, we got to the point now where we know to stay on the opposite side of the court from mm -hmm. each other to where mm -hmm. the defense come in, when I'm throwing that cross court pass, it's probably going to be to him. Or if he's throwing that cross court pass, it's probably going to be to me. So um, I think that's when we both get going. We've had games where I've been having a big game, but then down the stretch, you'll see him hit two big threes. Mm -hmm. And the other way around, it, ha it happened the other way around because that's how we both get hot. Or like a game like last night where we both got 30 points because late in the game, the paint is tight, and he end up hitting big shots because you know they is congested. They all in the paint, um, but the entire game has been like he's scoring, I'm scoring. We both got it going. So um, the fact that we're interchangeable, I think that makes it you know easy to coexist. I kind of label you CJ as a, a a freestyle player. You can do a lot of you can do a lot of things. I'm saying you what you can, that, a freestyle. It means like somebody who goes in there and improvises a lot. I know Coach Stotts probably never had a coach a player like you. Oh, he hates <laughs> So, So yeah. my point is, I remember watching 2015 playoffs. You guys in the first round playing the Memphis Grizzlies. Mm -hmm. I think that was your breakout playoff performance right there. Yeah. After that, they trade, let me see, Wesley Matthews. What, what, Wesley they Matthews was a free agent, let him walk. Trey and Nico, Nico. Mm -hmm. Lamarcus Aldridge, he, he left. Yeah. See, we got some some food coming out here. Uh huh. I ain't gonna do what I normally do. I'm gonna take a picture of it. <laughs> do <laughs> do it. <laughs> do it. Okay. All right. No, there we I go. I'm gonna take a picture of my. There food. we go. There she go. Take the picture, man. I'm gonna get the whole spread. All right. While I'm at it. Yeah. Get got him. No gaucho hooking it up. But when um everybody you know everybody left. What was that conversation like with Coach Stotts over that summer? Because I imagine there was probably some give and take he was going to have to, you know, yeah. get into to be able to coach and allow you to be able to, to flourish out there. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, we had ongoing discussions throughout those first couple of years of just, you know, talking about how I can improve and it's based on the situation I'm in. I remember one time he told me, you know, you're one of the, you're one of the few, you know, lottery picks who got drafted to a good team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you were on, you know, a team that I won't name, uh, you, you'd be in a position to, you know, have more of a green light, and uh, you know, you'd, you'd average a lot of points. You'd, you'd probably get a lot of assists, a lot of rebounds, and help your team and put up numbers uh, based on the situation and the minutes you're playing. But here, you know, obviously, West in front of you, with Nico in front of you, you know, split minutes with Thrill, and then we had Aaron following all those guys in. He was like, it's, it's a tough situation for you, but at, at one point or another, when you get your chance, I think you'll be ready to take full advantage of it because of having to, you know, play on a good team, learn how to win on a good team. 
you know, working out against guys and you know, going into that that uh, that year, I, I worked hard like I do every summer, understanding that I'm gonna get about 30 to 35 minutes a game, and I'm gonna get to play back on point guard. So I was I was thinking in my head like, if you a dog, you gonna eat, and if you not, they gonna find out you weak. <laughs> you know, I just that's basically what I looked at. You got a chance to sink or swim right here, and they they basically rolling the, rolling the dice with you, and this is that this is that third third year make or break year to where things don't go right. You, you put, you're getting put in that box, and you're gonna be labeled as a guy who didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you guys have been in the league a while, where you've seen scenarios like that play out. Right, guys don't pan out. They're in the league, one moment overseas, the next. What you guys have been doing right as of lately? I didn't see it. I don't think many people can see it. I didn't anticipate you guys even being anywhere close. What did you anticipate? While we're at it. That's a great question. The way you said that. Are we keeping felt, it 100? I felt, I felt like. I what, what, that. What, what else would we be keeping? Oh, okay. That's what I saw. Close. Oh, I was making sure. You know, not the third, third place. What did you anticipate, Chris? I anticipated seventh AC. Fighting, fighting for that eighth. Oh, you anticipated nine, bro. I, I, no, no. I, just, I anticipated the, the ceiling for you guys were the seventh. But I, I thought you guys would be fighting all the way through. So there's 16 games left. Yeah, no, and, and, and it's cluttered. I, I understand it's still a long way to go, but right. did no no way did I ever expect you guys to be at this point right now. When you hear other people doubt you, you know, you hear about Golden State, you hear about Houston. Um, on the East, you're hearing about Cleveland, Boston, Toronto. Hardly ever, ever any mention of Portland. Does that do something to you guys? Does that motivate, frustrate? What, what comes to mind? I mean, I, I wouldn't say it motivate or frustrate us. I think it's, I mean, that's just what it is. It ain't nothing, nothing that's new about that. And I think with those teams, it was, what they're doing was expected. So um, what we have accomplished so far, they're going to look at it like, like it's fluke. Mm -hmm. So they, they probably, they're going, it seems like they would rather address it later. Like, all right, we'll see about it. But those other teams were expected to be where they are. So, you know, they don't they don't have to mention us. We ain't doing what we're doing to be mentioned. You know, we just doing what we're doing to be the team that we are. So that I mean that's it. I had a little debate with a friend, I'm not gonna mention his name, but you know, you guys recently beat the go you know, beat the Golden State Warriors and uh my friend who who is a Warriors fan was like, Well, Steph wasn't playing. And what about you know, before the break? And that's what I that's what I, that's what I, that's what, was, that's what I still said. Three all stars on the court. Yeah, no, that that, 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 that wasn't on our team. No, I, you, you're right. You're right. That, that was my that was my comeback. But my point is, you still get that from a team that's trying to climb up. You're still going to get no matter what you do. You're still going to people people have pushback. You know, I mean? I'll get to this conversation later. It's even you know even when you're talking about ranking the point guards in the league, there's that talk, but. What is it going to take to, I guess, get that respect? So when you do have these signature wins, for most people, you know, it, it will convince them that this team is legit. What, what will it take? I think the the proof is in the pudding. You know, this is our this is my fifth year in the league, and this is going to be our fifth year making the playoffs. So that's one. Two is to continue to build on how we've been, how we've been, and how we've played the last five years. So. Getting more wins, getting 50 wins consistently, getting out of the first round, getting out of the second round. I think once you consistently do those things, then your perception cha cha changes a lot. Mm -hmm. People start to realize, you know, they they're not just great offensively. Their team is top 10 in defense. Mm -hmm. so if we both playing 37 minutes a night and we top 10 in defense, we have something to do with that. Mm -hmm. So defensively, being being in the top 10. Advancing out of the first round, advancing in the second round, eventually becoming a, a title contender to where, you know, we in that Western Conference Finals competing for an NBA championship. I think when you do those things consistently, you get 50 wins consistently, people can say whatever they want about who nice at the two-guard position, who's better, this and that. I don't care. What's going to matter is that we're getting 50 wins and we and we in contention <laughs> every year. And you can argue all the things in the world, but you can't argue these wins and losses. And no one has to explain, you know, you don't have to explain each win at the end of the year when, mm -hmm. when when Golden State has 60 wins or whatever it was, and when we get 50 wins, you don't have to explain. Well, but this game, such and such didn't play, yeah. and you know, and this they they played six games against teams where their best player was hurt. Who cares? Mm -hmm. No one cares. Mm -hmm. All people care about is wins and losses. 
you talk about uh, he, he hit it. He hit it right there. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> you talk, people talk about, you know, you guys been in the playoffs. Bounce from the first round, bounce from the second round. But I think what a lot of people don't remember is that when Portland made those moves, well, when they, you know, let some of those players go, most people thought that this was, that was going to be a rebuild. Right. You guys haven't missed the playoffs since during that point. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question, guy. I gotta keep it 100. You this, get nervous, man? Like no, I don't know, because I'm, yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see. Ask the question, man. I'm not just impressing him. I am, like that's, that's real. That's real. Let me, let me keep it real there. So, you guys are doing pretty good. Number three team in the West. Over the summer, last offseason, you guys recruited somebody really hard. All right? <laughs> And if you look at that team that that player is on, they're 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 down there as of right now. Does that show that the wrong decision was made, or do you think that other players should look at this this team now and say, okay, one piece away? What you mean the wrong decision was made, like on his part? Yes. I don't think it mean that. I mean, I, you you don't know how you don't know how things could have played out. What if we what if we would have been a better team? You you just don't know. Mm-hmm. You never know how how it would have played out because it didn't happen. Um, but I think you know one thing that we that we have going is we we roll with what we got and and we believe we don't go out there worried about. If this would have happened or this didn't happen, we go out there and play. And the people that we out there with, that's who we rolling with. Mm-hmm. That's who we believe in, regardless of what other people say. They're gonna say what they they're gonna have their opinions regardless. And it ain't gonna be in our favor. So um, we we there's nothing we can say or do about that. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it didn't happen and that's that's the bottom line. Keeping it one hundred type questions. Yes, I got another one. Yes, Dane. So before you guys went on this run, there was talks about what moves the, the Trailblazers need to make to improve this roster. And what always came up was they got to split one of you guys up. I mean, they got it has to be one of these guys, Dame or CJ. CJ, your name came up a lot. How did you internalize that and how did you take that? But I just take it in stride, understanding that that's how the business works. Uh, when, when things aren't going well, someone has to get blamed, and you're not going to blame people starting from the bottom. Mm-hmm. You can start at the top and, and weed through and pick things apart and try to figure out, well, why is this working? Why isn't that working? And then when you analyze potential trades, who are you going to trade for? Real? Who are you going to trade? You're going to trade valuable assets, or valuable assets are going to be mentioned in possible trades because that's the way the world works nowadays. Mm-hmm. And I think as an NBA player, you have to understand that it's a business and the organization has to do what's best for them. And you have to do what's best for yourself as a player. And your job as a player is to show up every day, be ready to play regardless of the noise that's going on around you. You need to be able to perform. And I think that's what I pride myself on, being able to perform and let the rest go out the window and trust the organization's plans and the path that they have in place and understand that there's a reason why they drafted me. There's a reason why you know I've gone through the, the progressions and steps I have up to this point. There's a reason why you know, when there were trade rumors, they dismissed them. Did you ever think that could have been anything concrete? And I didn't get any calls from my agent. And I talked to Neil um, before before the trade deadline. I told him to get home and get some rest. And he jokingly said he was on the phone trying to figure out where he was going to move me next. <laughs> <laughs> and when he, when he said that joke, I knew I was like, all right, I'm safe right now straight. because he wouldn't be joking about this if he was serious. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, in all seriousness, I just, I feel like what's meant to be will be. Man. I, I try not to worry about nothing I can't control. I can't control rumors. I can't control people being interested in me. I think you should look at it as a blessing that other people think you're valuable enough to be mentioned in the trade. Hmm. It could be worse. No one could want you. That's true. And if no one wants you, that's a problem. Hmm. That's true. <laughs> Interesting topic. I want to get I want to get you guys' opinion on. The All Star format was changed this year to where there was a captain, mm-hmm. uh, but it kept the same. You know, you get 12 from the East, 12 from the West. I think that's dumb. 
I think if you're if if it's not going if the teams are not going to be labeled east or west teams, then take the top 24. Because this is my thing. I feel like Dame. I feel like Dame has been screwed a couple years for the All Star vote. And let's say you, CJ, if you were in the East, you probably have an All Star appearance or two already. If you take the top 24, you're taking the best. And I think it's unfair to have certain guys who may not be of your, you guys' caliber, but they're in another conference, and they got two or three all-star appearances. What already. guys are you referring to? Oh, I'm, not, I'm, not referring, I'm not bringing up, I don't bring any names. I'm, I'm a gentleman. I'm not doing that. Oh, I thought as a journalist, your job was to give the facts. That is true. So Sources, you referring Sources said, said that. Is that. True. He didn't say that. You, you, want me, you want me to go there? Why not? We keep it in 100. Where I'm from, we go there. I'll just say this. If you got, <laughs> I'll just say this. I was hoping you said, said don't go there. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm gonna go, go, go there. So okay. if I'm you just guys, hey, man, who you're referring to, I don't think we should do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, but my, my point is, I don't think y'all should be disrespecting nobody. Okay, that's that's fine. I asked him for his opinion. All right, I'm gonna say this: if you guys are on the West, then the Kimber Walkers over the world will have a hard time. Get multiple All Star appearances. Goran Dragic wouldn't be an All Star. My my point. So we're not disrespecting. I'm just talking about if if there was a relocation. But are you guys in favor of taking the top 24 All Stars or leaving it as it is, 12 from from each side? I want both of you guys' opinions. I wouldn't be mad at it. I mean, I think if they if they're not gonna have the teams be East and West then why not? But, I mean, I wouldn't be mad if it stayed the same either. I don't think – I think the issue is more of the voting than it is being East and West. Why, why so? What, what do you mean the voting? You mean the, the dis- distribution of votes, fans? Who's voting? Okay. And why they're voting for who they're voting for. Okay. I think that's more of an issue than it is East and West. It's always been that way. Mm-hmm. The fans, that's a bigger issue. The fans have had to vote most of the time. I'm not talking about for the start. No, I mean, reserves, you mentioned reserves. Coaches, yeah, coaches and everything. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. What about you, C? What you think? I wouldn't mind the 24 best players, but I think the bigger issue is figuring out what an all-star actually is. Is it team success? Is it individual success? Like, what what is an all-star? Because a lot of times, you're not you're not sure based on some of the selections if it's <laughs> if yeah. it's a good player yeah. on a great team mm-hmm. or a great player on a bad team. Like yeah. You don't you don't know what what's What's really defining an all-star? How are you defining an all-star? Is it his impact on the organization? Is it his impact in the NBA? Or is it him benefiting from being on a good team? You just you're just not sure a lot of times of the voting and how it works. So I think just understanding the criteria of what is an all-star. Mm-hmm. Because I think there's a lot of all-star caliber players out there, probably more than 24, but it just depends on how you're defining it. And, and I think the re- the reason I brought that up, I think it's unfair for say when you guys' career is over, you have one guy who was in the Eastern Conference. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm just hypothetical. We have one guy's in the Eastern Conference his whole career, and he's a not eight-time All-Star, right? Right. But then you have somebody in the West who has maybe three or four All-Star appearances. He was clearly better than that, the guy in the East, but he has more All-Stars. Then we're talking about Hall of Fame resumes and things of that nature. That kind of wavers, because, you know, for the average fan, you know, you throw some numbers, oh, he's a nine-time All-Star. Or, he, he, you know, he's been there this many times. He must have been better. And I, I think it, it doesn't it doesn't capture the quality of the player in its totality. And that's why I think twenty four opposed to right. just I, doing the side. I think you're right, but I think I, be mad at that. I think the best part about being in the NBA and playing the NBA is you know who's real and who's not. Yeah. So you can you can have a few players who, who may have some some extra awards, but they know who real and who not. When they go home and go to sleep at night. They know who they really are. Okay. Since you bring you brought up your peers, both of y'all, y'all shaking y'all head in, in agreement. I got a problem with your peers, cause we give we gave you guys the uh, the the, uh, the postseason awards. Okay, I got a problem. And with your peers. and you guys had hold on, you guys had a say in like, the, the All Star like, Award. You didn't like the voting. Man, come on, man. You had guy Luke Babbitt had a vote. You had <laughs> it, it, it. It was crazy. <laughs> guys were just throwing out, just throwing out. Like if we, if we want to be serious here, hey, shout out to Luke Babbitt. No, man, Luke, that was Luke. My <laughs> I love. I'm just saying, no disrespect. I'm just saying, 
guy, they were just giving it out to their you know, best, you know, their best friends on the team and everything, anything like that. Like they didn't take it serious. Everybody didn't take it serious. They did. So, so what, what? What's the point? But how impactful were those votes? Honestly, prop probably not impacting the end result, but obviously impacting their percentage. And I, I, I still think that matters. I voted for Zaza Apuchulia two years ago. No, you didn't. I did. Why? <laughs> Hashtag NBA vote. Because I think that, you know, looking at the standings and, and how, where you're born at, what market you're playing, all that stuff swings it. you got average players getting tons of votes because of where they play at or where they're from. But why did you vote? Yeah, why did you vote? Because <laughs> I was, thought it was a joke, like this whole system. I was like, this is a joke. Hashtag Zaza Pajulia. And he thanked me for voting for him. <laughs> And he, he was, he he was almost, leading forwards. He was almost a starter. That's when he was in Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. He almost started. That's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Man, this dude is crazy. <laughs> he almost was a starter. That's what I'm talking and, about. And if he would have started, I guarantee they would have changed the rules. <laughs> oh, they, they for sure would have changed the rules. <laughs> so you, so you so wanted to see that? He was change. trying to get the rule changed. Make some changes around here, man. <laughs> you want to promote change? Be the change you wish to see. Use <laughs> <laughs> Zaza, I know that, huh? Zaza, my guy, man. Zaza be, be out there acting crazy sometimes. But. <laughs> <laughs> he be out there wilding out. <laughs> he say, Zaza going Zaza. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to Zaza. That's, that's, that's my guy oh, as well. <laughs> Y'all something else, man. I looked up the stat for the, the smallest backcourt who had the highest points per game. Production. Can you guess where you guys fall in, in history? Mm, Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumar. Nah. They they're not they weren't even in the top five. Where we fall? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't be betting him either. You know, a lot of baskets. The top five. You guys are as of right now, you guys Number made it. You know, number two. Number one was 1971-72 Lakers, Gail Goodrich and Jerry West. They combined for 51.7. This is all 6-3 and under. Career average. Career average. No, that, that was that season. Oh. Come, you know, last year, you guys were 50, you know, 54-0. Last year, combined. That was second all time. Right now, what you guys are at right now, we'll put place off fourth all time. Where are we right now? Right now, y'all 48.6. What, um, what's the top five? Top five is number one, Lakers, Gail Goodrich, and Jerry West, 71-72 team. Your last year, you guys last year, number two. Number three, 78-79 Clippers, Randy Smith and World Be Free, average 49.3. Oh, then um, next is the 68-69 Bullets, Earl Monroe, Kevin Lowry, 48.4. And then what you guys are doing right now. What do y'all, what do y'all think about when y'all here? Hear that in, just in the historical context. Seems like nothing, huh? That's I mean, cool. that's that's good. That's good company, but I don't even think about small backcourt. Mm-hmm. I think about backcourt. You know, it don't matter if you're small or not. What is? What's the numbers of the, the biggest backcourt? That's, that's what I, they need to look up. What's the number? What's the highest average from the biggest backcourt? It probably was weak. Exactly. Yeah. Probably not even weak, but it probably wasn't that much production. Like yeah, they don't guarantee production. Yeah, like Jordan and Ron Harper, they both six six, but well, Jordan did most of the that. Yeah, I'm just saying, like just because it's a bigger backcourt, don't guarantee more production. Mm-hmm. So I, that's why I'm saying we just a backcourt. It ain't like we out here just getting bullied on on defense, and ain't nobody just locking us up. So why does it matter? We just a backcourt. We ain't out here just, just scoring and losing every game. We in the postseason. We out here doing what we got to do on offense. And like he was saying earlier, our, we on a top defensive team. We play a lot of minutes. So we just, it don't matter small or small or tall. We just a, a backcourt. It, it sounds sound like you get, uh, not defense is not the right word, but it sounds like you get, ti- you get tired of hearing that. that I mean, it, at some point, you, when people mention that, oh, they're a small backcourt, you know, it, it gets mentioned so much to, at some point, you got to have something to, to put behind it. Mm-hmm. You got to put something up there with it. Like, 
what's 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 a backcourt that that you would want our, our size to be like that would make us so much better? Okay. What they doing? Okay. I, I, get, I get what you're saying. It, it, it's still you know it's it's not a, I wouldn't say it's impressive, but it's just it's unique in today's NBA. I, I would just, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, my opinion is this: if you guys are in the East, he has more All Star appearances, and you have you have one on your belt. That's my opinion. So if we want to make the you want to make this balance and fair, put the it's supposed to be the top twenty four, right? right? The top twenty four All Stars. Mm-hmm. That's that's not what it is right now. So that's my only thing. Another thing I have a problem with, you would probably wouldn't agree. I have a problem with the revealing. Well, I, first of all, I think the I don't like the draft. I'm probably the only one in the media that doesn't like the whole All Star draft. What do you like about it? This is what I think. I think the whole thing is uncalled for. This, this is why. I think you take all these All Stars. Hear me out. I think you take all these All Stars, and now we're putting them in in, in groups, pecking orders, in pecking right. orders. But there are groups. But it don't. But why? But why should we subject them to that? We we all know that. But why should we know that Al Horford or Lamar? I'm on camera right? saying this. Y'all can pick me last. <laughs> pick me last. If you're picking me, I don't care if you pick me last. <laughs> I'd just be happy to pull up. Sometimes you just got to count your blessings and keep it moving. That, that's fine. How you no, going to be no. mad because you 24th best? That's it's petty. unnecessary. It's petty. It's unnecessary. You get like a ring or something too? Give me my ring in 24th. I, I, I didn't know about that. I'll be, I'll be laughing to the bank. <laughs> How you gonna be mad? Pick me last. Go ahead. Lock me up. <laughs> so, Go so, ahead. So, so, all right, all right, check this out. So, what if there was a visual? What if they put all 24 out there on the court? And I'm in the one, NBA. What up? What up? <laughs> who cares? Who cares? There are some people who care. You should you say, be, what if they just put them out there? What? What if they just put them out there on the court and just did the draft like that? That would be, that's how it is growing up. That's but you like grown man. But this, I understand. I feel what you're saying. This, 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 I, I just feel like it's unnecessary drama. It's unnecessary. And then, there's these memes, you know, the internet put oh, these the memes, memes out. But so, yeah, come on, that's unnecessary. So now we're taking it to, you know, we're going from that. Before it was just all stars. Everybody's all stars. We knew they were a pecking order. But, but hockey does it. Who watches hockey? I'm just saying, they do it. They all grown men. I didn't know they did it until. I didn't either. The NBA. Okay, I well, I, well, well let, let you know. Let you know. So. I feel what you're saying, but like. I also feel what he's saying. Like, if, if I get picked last, they ain't going to hurt my feelings. I'm going to be like, I don't know why they picking me last, but, <laughs> but I'm here. I'm going to be like, they tripping. Like, so, but what? We but don't I ain't going to, my though. feelings ain't going to be I hurt. understand, I but that's unnecessary. Because now you're going in there with a little grudge. I don't know why they picking me last. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to go. It's unnecessary. You go in there with a the grudge, then. It's supposed to be your free week of relaxation. You know what you should be mad when you're not picked? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're like, okay, you get it. Maybe you got a long vacation but to be picked. All right, I'm not winning this battle. Think That's about fair. It. Think about you in the running. I, I feel what you're saying, though. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it ain't that deep to be going in there acting, doing petty stuff. Like, would you rather have the job you want or be told that you got picked last, but you got? It? <laughs> I mean, at least I got it. Can I have the job and not know? <laughs> where I was, where I was if picked they up. tell you it's picked last, you're going to tell them you don't want it? No, nah, nah, you're going to be like, yeah, I still, still got to feed my family. I'll take it, but it's it still be hard for me to walk around the office. People know I was the <laughs> last man standing. But you made it, though. Nah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm- I mean, people, like you saying, it's, it'll probably be memes and people saying stuff like that. But like he was saying earlier, like it's about like your peers. You know, your peers respect you because it's just like you might be the, the 21st, 24th person selected, yeah. it's going to be 10 other people that's going to be mad they ain't get picked at all. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it is what it is. All right, I'll move on. I'm, I didn't even win. I thought I, had some, I thought I had some people on my side. So, <laughs> with, with you, Dan, I want to switch to you on this real quick. <clears throat> You're getting a lot of publicity this year. I think even more so this year than any other year. Uh, people are talking about putting you on lists. Where do you rank you know, yourself amongst the point guards? You spoke to our Rachel Nichols during All-Star Weekend. You said you, you know, you're right up there. And I remember when I'm you as s- good as any of Yeah, you was good. And I remember when you said that, there was this big debate for like the next two days. Like, is he, is he not? And when you said that to me, it was like, 
Okay, yeah. He is. He is one of the top point guards. What am I supposed to say? They better than me. I don't know what you're supposed to say. I, I, just, didn't, I just didn't see it as, as controversial. I didn't see it as being a... It wasn't meant to be. No, it's he not. He asked me a question, and I, and I answered it. My point, okay. Let's go to this. I'm, I'm, again, I'm not using defensive, but you do get tired of certain narratives. So now, you're on national TV a lot. You're doing things that you were doing even in your first three years. What I mean by that? shooting these deep threes. So you're shooting deep threes, hitting big deep threes, and have you heard what people are saying that you're doing? Like, what? oh, he's shooting threes like. What, Steph Curry? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't heard nobody saying it lately, but I know that's, man, that, this is not new. Mm -hmm. This is not new. We winning games, so now people are paying attention and, or whatever they're gonna do, but this is not new. Why do you think it's like that? Like what? Why, why do you think? Why, why do you think it seems like, like you can't have your own? That's something you're good at. That's something you've been doing. So why is it a comparison to Steph? Why can't you guys just be the both at doing, doing that? I don't know. If I knew the answer to the question, <laughs> I'd tell you. But I don't know. Does it bother you? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would prefer people to say. He's doing what Damian Lillard does, because that would tell me that they pay attention. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since I came in the league. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that they got to use another man, somebody that I compete against to describe what I'm doing, it's like, man, just just say I'm doing what, what I've been doing since day one. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I don't get my feelings about it. Um, I think everybody know that I take it upon myself to, to handle it on the court. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always going to do that. And, um, I think that's the best way to go about it. How do you um, handle being from Oakland, the hometown team, the Golden State Warriors, and what they're doing right now? How do, how do you handle that from a competitive standpoint and just th that's being your background, the hometown team? I mean, I'm happy for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I ain't, I think that's as far as it goes. I'm happy for them. You know, I ain't. Obviously, I would prefer it be my team instead of them, but um, you know, that's as far as it goes. I'm, I'm happy for the, for the city to be able to experience that because they was always one of the worst teams in the league when I was growing yeah. up until, like, Baron Davis and them came. But, I mean, I don't, it don't make me feel no way. So I, I want to transition this real quick. The unwritten rules. Unwritten rules in basketball. And I have to take issue with you, Dane. And I'm pretty sure you feel you, you agree with him, but I'm gonna take the issue. So, you guys seen, you guys seen the high school clip of the guy dunking and getting pushed and shoved. Mm -hmm. How did how did you guys feel about that? I mean, he could have killed that dude. Yeah. Like he Cut usually when you see that kind of play, it's like a little tap in the back, and just because of your momentum, it'll carry you a little bit. But he pushed him like he flew mm -hmm. into the stanchion. So like, I mean, that's a dirty play, man. Like he he gotta get his ass whooped after that. I'm, well, I'm like gonna, that's the only way that yeah. like you he he tried like you don't do that yeah. period that's like that's like bush league that's worse mm -hmm. you don't do stuff like that like that's that's harm you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying you, he could have really took this dude out so his teammates supposed to run up after that man I was that was that was a dirty play man that was dangerous I was surprised it, it was it didn't seem like there was any stuff on it at all was he passed out was it the dude passed man, out I, or he was I, just hurt. He, he, he was just hurt, but he, he got up. Heard it. He got up and it was okay. And when I first saw it, it looked fake a little bit, like because he didn't. Yeah, it looked like it was like somebody did that on a computer. So. Yeah, that's that's what it looked. But it was real. I saw I saw another um, camera angle. His leg got caught too on the stanchion. Yeah, I think that's what kind of braced his fall too, stop stop some of his momentum. But no, so I br I brought that up. Talk about unwritten rules. So going to Houston, you guys it seemed like you guys are starting to. Get a little little rivalry going, something something brewing between you guys. Chris Paul goes and scores. You have some words with him. Last week, Jordan Clarkson did the same thing. Uh, Philadelphia was beating the, the Cavaliers. And um, Dario Saric goes in for a layup. They already had the game wrapped up. Jordan Clarkson gets the ball, throws, throws at his back, gets the tech. My thing is this. How much onus should be on 
the losing team to play defense until the buzzer ends? I don't think I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, if people just walking back and you got if you got the ball, like I still I still wouldn't shoot it. I had a situation in my rookie year where the ball was thrown ahead to me and nobody was back and I was standing right under the I basket. That. Who, I somebody came it. and approached you. It, it was, was against a, the Bulls. I dunked it because I was under the basket and nobody came mm -hmm. back. So after I dunked it, they walked up like, man, what you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I was like, man, whatever. Like, I wasn't tripping. I wasn't trying to disrespect them, but mm -hmm. I, I was just standing under the basket. So after that, I was like, after the game, the vets, they explained it to me and I was like, man, I felt bad because I was mm -hmm. like, we didn't need, I didn't even have to shoot it. Regardless of where I was on the court, that's like running a score up. That's like a slap in the face to them. Mm -hmm. The game is over. Yeah. And so, I mean, going back to Houston, if that would have happened, like if he would have just been playing, playing the game out, then whatever, but it was two people back. Me and Bass sprinted back, so it wouldn't be like we just yeah. stopping. Mm -hmm. Me and Bass sprinted back. CJ was chasing him down the court. He sprinted to go get the layup. Yeah. So it was like, I mean, he, he'd been in the league a long time. So I was just like, man, what, what type of player is that? What's that about? Mm -hmm. And he was like, y'all ain't playing defense. So I was like, all right. Well, that, and I tried to hit the ball out of his hand, and I ain't like it. Yeah. It was that simple. I ain't like it. What about you, C? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it's, I mean, he's got a point. This, we literally we were sprinting back for that reason for we, that exact reason. Even on both sides, because when I was a younger player, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you don't like it. If I want to dunk it, I'm gonna dunk it because mm -hmm. it's a game, and that's why that's how I'm, that's just how I'm built, how I'm wired. But as you get older, I mean, it's some things you should do, some things you shouldn't do. But I think just just put it like this: ain't gonna be no more layups. Mm, okay. Not if okay. I'm around. All right. <laughs> All hey, right. just know we're going to play to zero. Play to zero. Ain't going to be no pushes in the back. We're going to play to zeros on the clock. I mean. But no, no, everybody don't. Like, no matter might who be we a, play. a strong like, contest at the rim. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just going to play to zeros on both ends. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about what Houston's doing? And, uh, the, it seemed like there was chemistry between James Harden and Chris Paul first year. Yeah, I think mean, they're playing well. They're playing well, they're sharing the ball, they're shooting a lot of threes, look like they're having fun. What makes them a tough matchup? I think they just, so many shooters on the court. You got uh, Chris Paul and James, two guys that can score, great passers, great playmakers, and they taking turns and, you know, it, the defense is going to be spread out because there's shooters everywhere. You know, they got a guy who's screening and catching lobs and, uh, playing in the paint and everybody else is out there deep and they all knock down shooters. You know, then you you come in behind them with somebody like Eric Gordon. Um, then you got Gerald Green. He coming in after all those other guys and he firing too. So when you got so many shooters um, around those two playmakers and they got they out there playing defense. You know, you got Trevor Ariza, P.J. Tucker, Clint Capella in the paint. They got like everybody has a role and it seems like you know, they committed to what they got to do for the team. You know, if you get, if they get in the paint and they throw it to you, catch it and shoot it. Mm -hmm. if, he, if, if the, the big step up, go get this lob. Mm -hmm. Trevor Ariza going to guard whoever the best player is. P.J. Tucker going to go down there and try to junk up the game. I mean, they, you can just tell that they're on, they on the same page. What is, what is it going to take for you guys to get to that next level? When I mean next level, I'm talking championship contending team. I think consistency. Um, we have great stretches and then terrible stretches. Like we, we lost five games in a row at home, five or six games in a row at home. So consistently being able to beat sub-500 teams. I think we're 22, 23, and five this year against sub-500 teams. So we're getting better at being able to beat teams at home and on the road, back to back, regardless of the situation, after a big win. So let's say you beat a a contender and then you got to go play a sub 500 team like how do you respond to that I think that's the sign of being a good consistent team being able to get 50 plus wins year in and year out that's the difference between that and an eight seed matching up against a real contender mm -hmm. 
So ESPN, my, my company, my great company, <laughs> put together, put together a, a player ranking before the season. And there was some controversy about where some guys were placed and who was left out. And then you put out a tweet, and I'll quote. So after the rankings came in, you tweeted out, we need to start ranking these weak-ass journalists. <laughs> I said more, too, didn't I? Well, what did you, that's, that's, I just oh, okay. left it at that part. What, yeah. what, else, what else did you say? I think I hit it right on the head. Okay. There's a lot of journalists that aren't held to an acceptable, accountable manner. Mm -hmm. All these predictions are made, all these opinions are made about players, certain situations, their thoughts on what's going to happen, and then the opposite happens, mm -hmm. and they aren't held accountable for what they said. Mm -hmm. If I go make a guarantee and it don't work out, I'm going to hear about it, right? Yes. Yeah. As a journalist, as a guy who went to school for journalism, yeah. there isn't, there's a level of accountability that I think isn't always there and it's not always consistent. Mm -hmm. You guys can say something and then it's, oh, that's my opinion. I'm like, that's cool, that's your opinion, now back it up with something. And that's what I meant by them weak ass journalists out there. <laughs> and if you're weak, you know who you are. <laughs> well, well that's, that's the thing. We don't know who we are. Yeah, you you were supposed to put you were supposed to put together a list, a ranking list. My dad always did. Was, they was mad about that too. I no, saw, they was mad. I saw yeah. some journalists journalists was like, was Oh, they was like, Oh, the players, well, they aren't qualified to rank journalists. Yeah. We ain't qualified. And y'all ain't qualified <laughs> to rank us. Because how many how many of y'all played in the league? How many played in high school? Nah, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, well, tight turn. Y how many of y'all can hit an NBA three? How many? How many? How many y'all can dunk? <laughs> oh, you go check. How many? How many play high school? <laughs> how many play college? All right. You the exception. Man. But I'm just saying that my simple statement had y'all sick. It, it, DMing me like, man, I hope I DM? can make your list. You got like, some DMs? Oh yeah. Oh, they were begging for. Man. Explode. Keep it 100. <laughs> Put it out right there. I Who DM'd you? I got D. I ain't going to. <laughs> Come on. Whoa, you talking about me? <laughs> you talking about me? I put some names out there. I don't hey, I'm going to say this again. I don't save DMs, but <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to save you this time. Don't do this. I got dude. some DMs. Uh, Just put it like this, man. I had a coalition in place, man. Uh, all NBA I might be on the line I had a lot right of here. NBA guys <laughs> out there who was ready. We had a list of journalists. I mean, we was figuring out what, Hold on. I know what one levels of, of journalists we I was know, going. I know one of them. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you do. KD was one of them. There was more. There was more than that. There was a lot of outspoken athletes ready. I had to tame them. Who else, who else was in there? I had yeah. to tame them. There was, there was some other ones. Dude, dude I was, was ready. That. And it wasn't just like a one-liner. I'm talking about we was going to do scouting reports. Weak journalists. <laughs> All the way down to y'all. Bad outfit. at this. <laughs> you know, sources, well, outfit, sources are about. suspect. He said oh. I would have been mad. Makes up sources. <laughs> Terrible headlines. Damn. Needs to work on titles. <laughs> Damn. Interview <laughs> questions are weak. This was extensive. Oh, we was going to go in. It was going to be like, a, you know how the draft is? I said we should do it like this. Strengths, weaknesses, areas they can improve upon. Hold on. So, so this oh, we was going to get it. We all get all it this, in. all this from just from, from the my tweet. I, I, we had them ready. We was going to do it. We were going to do it. Make it a player Tribune article. Y'all petty. And, and petty. publish it before the season. Y'all would have been so sick. Y'all petty, man. I told them we had to hold off. I said it's too much for the man. <laughs> <laughs> America can't handle this. Too. That would have got coverage too. Y'all have been hot. Don't worry, it's come, it's gonna come back out at some point. Maybe when I retire, I won't care, and I'll just do it myself. So it's already complete. It's not complete, but it was in the process of being epic. We were gonna figure out we were gonna do top twenty, top fifty, top one hundred. We, we was thinking about doing a top one hundred. We had a list of a hundred journalists. Damn. You know how sick one on one would be the guy that didn't make it or the woman that didn't make it. You know how sick they would be if a hundred people made it in front of them. And this is all just to get back. This is all just to prove a point. That's, that's petty, Caesar. I am a petty person. Oh, well, okay. All right, well, at least you admit it. We all petty on the inside, deep down. You just said you would be mad if you got the job and they told you you was last. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. If I'm last on that damn list, that, that's a problem. Yeah, you petty. Then you got to hear No, that's a damn problem because we got we, we to be speak truth, speak fact. I don't think you will be last. So you'll be close to it. <laughs> 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 Y'all crazy, ah. man. Y'all something else, man. All oh, right. Oh, man. Uh, March Madness is upon us. If you guys can go back, Weber State days, Lehigh, you know, 
if they played together, your team, the best team featuring you guys, who will win? That's, yeah, a, that's, a them? that's a good one. My team, we had a squad. Because Kufus was on your no, that was high, high school. school. That was high school. That's why. I, I don't know. We was My we didn't lose. Nice. We we didn't lose until the conference championship. That's what we used to struggle because they used to be. I got two rings. I would have had three if I ain't getting hurt. <laughs> but I think I had a like my, my my one team, we had Marquise, who worked for Nike now. He was nice. We had Z. He gave Kansas twenty two and twelve. The, the Robinson twins was there. Uh, they wouldn't no. they wouldn't have beat us. Morris twins was there. He, he just said it right there. I expect your won. honesty, man. They wouldn't have beat us. At least somebody's being honest at this table. I feel I feel like we would have won. You feel like now? I huh? feel like we had a better team. Just we would have knocked. We would have knocked. Them I think the role mm-hmm. players would have been decisive. <laughs> I had a dude on my team. I had a dude on my team named Frank Sessions. Mm-hmm. He was MVP of the Drew League this past summer. Mm-hmm. He was nice. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. They like, would have had an answer for him. Huh? I mean, like it would have been. I had a. I had a running mate. Like it would have went down for sure. Did you have a running mate? Yeah. Straight from Watts. A- Marquise would have been. <laughs> hey, hey, Marquis got baskets. Straight from, straight out of Watts. Right we ain't left. going. Well, uh, all I'm saying is that Jordan Down Project. My roommates, my roommates was my roommate. One roommate was six nine, lefty with a strap from Iowa. Gabe, he was nice. Holden Griner, six seven from Traverse City, Michigan. He had a strap. B.J. Bailey was our defender, so we would put him on you. Clamps. He was a lot. Clamps. <laughs> Yeah, all right. He'd have held Dane to like 20. He would have he been a defender that night. He would have held Dane to like 20, locked him up. We'd have seen the random doubles. Oh, man. And then we would have introduced him to that, that, that boxing one again. He would have seen some boxing one action. And there's always a I weak I saw that league. for three years. There's always a weak league in the lineup. You just got to make him beat you. And this tells me, because you, you, you real real knowledgeable about the, this man's rotation on the card. This lets me know that you guys have been thinking about this for a while. No, I just thought about our team, and there's always okay. a weak link on every team. And we had weak links too, but they would have to figure out who they were to expose them. All right. I got to ask. So, uh, big, big controversy, if you want to call it, this season has been the, the relationship between the officials and the players this year. Um, there's been a lot of tension. There was a meeting over All Star break. How do you guys feel officiating has been this year, and, and just the relationship, the relationships that you have um, had with them? I don't think I don't think it's a bad relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, refs got a hard job. A lot of times, the game is so fast, plays happen, mm-hmm. and sometimes one thing will happen, and I'll be sure in my mind like that was off them. Yeah. And then when I see it later, it, it, they'll have it right, or I might think I got fouled. And then when I see it later, it's like all right, that was like minimal contact. So I think they, you know, their job is so tough. And as competitors, we just get so locked into the game, and we, you know, we we fired up about what's happening that you know sometimes even we could be delusional, yeah. and you know we we see the stripes. We don't always look at them as as men or as people, and I think that's that's part of the problem. And you know the the way we address them sometimes, it I I kind of got to take a step back and put myself in their shoes if I got to do screaming and walking up over me. And, I, and I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm a I'm a man. You ain't gonna just disrespect me. So then you see where a quick tech might come from, mm-hmm. or where you might get a certain vibe from a referee or an attitude that you might feel like they getting you. And it's um, I think that's that's a two way street. I mean, obviously, in any job you do, you're gonna struggle. Sometimes I I think refs struggle, but um, it's. As far as everybody, you know, making it like, oh, the relationship this year between the, the refs, I'm sure that, I mean, they struggle just like we we have it wrong sometimes, they have it wrong sometimes, but I don't think it's, it's that deep. Obviously, it could be better um, between the players and the referees, but, I mean, we out there competing, and they, they trying to get every play right, and it's a tough game to call, man. So I, I think that's what it comes down to. You feel the same way, or? You can hear everything on the head. You hear everything? I don't shoot a lot of free throws, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, is that a complaint? I'm just saying. <laughs> why is that? Look at the stats, man. Why, why you don't shoot a lot of free throws? I don't know. I, I think I'm the first player in NBA history to ever 20 points a game and shoot two free throws. Oh, game. okay. All buckets. Uh, I get all field goals. <laughs> <laughs> no trips to the stripe, huh? Inconsistently, I make it to the free throw line. 
every couple of games. He said, I'm a free throw. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go to free throw? I would love bro? to get to the free throw line. <laughs> we'd love CJ ain't a good arguer though. Like oh. he'll like he'll get fat or something. He'll be like, and he'll just give up. I ain't yeah. giving. Up. <laughs> Are you persuading? I'm per, I'm pushing yeah. the issue. I'm gonna have an example for you. Because it helps you, you down what to the watch road. for yeah. all that. Yeah. Maybe that help, man. Um, I, I'll just be like, he just be like. <laughs> Hey, I got I gotta ask y'all the biggest you know. A lot of people say you guys are one piece away, and probably one of the biggest pieces to hit free agency is going to you know, which would be LeBron James this summer. What do you guys think he'll end up? <laughs> Trying to make headlines, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking the question. Damian Lillard says, <laughs> and CJ <laughs> McCollum say that LeBron <laughs> is heading to where. <laughs> you know, I'm from I'm from Canada. I, I know you from that. I know where I'm from. Man. I know you from. I ain't trying to start no rumors or okay. anything like that, man. But I heard? think the proof is <laughs> 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 the streets to be talking to me. Uh, what, 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 what they say? What the streets saying? Right? <laughs> the streets saying. <laughs> uh -huh. the streets saying, my man, out of there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You have to ask Brian. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You have to ask Brian though. I don't know. <laughs> okay. That's funny. As I don't know where my man going, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, can, he can go wherever he want, though. Yeah, he could. He, I mean, he 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 brought the Cleveland championship. It's room won. for him everywhere. Even Facts. in Portland, huh? Is that a serious question? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not about to go recruiting nobody, man. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> he know he can go wherever he want. I didn't say that. So, amongst the best back backcourts in the league, where do you guys fit in at? <laughs> it's on you, see? He got some shrimp in his mouth. Hmm? Well, we got 40 wins right now. I say mm -hmm. we're doing pretty well. Some teams got more wins than us. Some teams got less. Is that the only I think criteria that's, you go by? I think that's what matters at this point. Like, everybody nice go through every team with good guards. Everybody can shoot off the dribble for the most part. Some guys is very good at assisting others. Some guys is stupid athletic. Everybody nice. I think it's just about winning at this point. Like no one's going to remember 20 years from now with somebody averaged and point to the point to the decimal to the 10th decimal point. They ain't playing two on two. They're going to remember how your team did when it mattered. Mm -hmm. How many times did you go to the playoffs? How many times did you get 50 wins? Did you win a championship? Did you get to the Western and Eastern Conference Finals? How was your path to the finals? All that stuff, and that's what matters. I'm not about to argue about who better, because I'm 26 now, man. I don't really care who better. Bro, if we win it, I do. If we win it, that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> Please elaborate. I don't think, I mean, I think we, like I said about when they asked me who the best point guard, I think we as good as any backcourt. We, we get to the playoffs every year. We haven't had the playoff success that we want to have, and that's what we're working towards, but we we get the job done when it comes to winning games. It's a, I think it's a lot of um, it's a lot of people in the league that they're not in the playoffs consistently. They don't it's, everybody ain't getting into the playoffs every year. I think we find a way to get that done every year. And whenever we matched up against whoever, we out there, we banging. We we going at everybody and we we standing up to every matchup. So I think like he said, nobody gonna look back and be like, oh, they averaged the most points. And during this time, it's gonna come down to like wins and uh, your team success. But I think if if that's a discussion, we as good as any backcourt. Mm -hmm. you know, it depends on your cup of tea. I like my cup of tea. <laughs> Who do you think I, the best backcourt is? Oh, why you, you want to throw it on me? Yeah. You, you at the us. table, ain't you? Come on, man. Why you shaking, man? You nervous? He it's don't okay. want to tell us it ain't us. <laughs> <laughs> Dame, CJ, you guys is right. A lot of people who don't know, David Vanderpool, an assistant coach for the Trailblazers, what has he meant for you guys' career? You know, how instrumental has he been for those that don't know? I mean, for... 
I think for both of us, but for me personally, I think he's been uh, like a huge part of why I've been able to be successful every season um, on a higher level. I mean, obviously I was a six pick. I came in, Coach Stotts gave me, I led the league in minutes as a rookie, so I had enough opportunity um, to do everything that I needed to do to be a rookie of the year, letting me play through mistakes, letting me have the ball at the end of games, uh, letting me take shots and just be myself. But then it was like, you got so many guys that come in and after that, you know, then you're not sure where the growth is going to come from. And for me, my whole rookie year, it was before practice, we was working out. We need to work on the pull-up. You go left every time. We need to work on this pull-up. All right, let's work on the floater. Um, we're watching film, breaking down everything defensively, offensively, and it was like every single day where I walk in, I already knew he was going to be sitting there with a laptop. <laughs> I already knew we was working out. After practice, I knew we was doing something. It was just like nonstop. So, like, for my growth, um, you know, I probably would have figured a lot of stuff out, but if he wasn't here, it was a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have figured out. And I think um, the mental part, like the cerebral part of the game, like being a point guard and recognizing sets, um, figuring out what the, the other team's coverages are and what plays I'm going to call because of what they're doing, um, just playing that mind game, manipulating the game and managing the game, I don't think I would have become as good at that if it wasn't for him. And I think that's been a big part of why I've been able to get better each year. It hasn't always been just physical. I think the mental part um, that he had to have as a player because of his talent level might not have been, you know, on a yeah. super high level. He had to have that to be able to be better than players that might have had more talent. And I think I come in and it's a lot of players with more talent than me. So I kind of, um, you know, I really – uh, moved in the direction of that that mental part um, and I really bought into that side because I knew like all right I'm not gonna grow no more I ain't gonna get no more athletic I'm gonna always be able to shoot I mean I can run fast and all that stuff but if I can get this other side down and you know I think um, that's been like a huge difference in in my career coach <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Hey, I got another story too. Uh oh. Yeah. So we, before, before my first training camp, we was playing pickup, and this is like another thing. Like at first, I wouldn't say nothing. I knew he. Was and like now, I'm so, now like my teammates to tell you, I'm saying something about everything. Like I always got something to say. We was playing pickup before my first training camp, and like he was, even when they first got the job, he was the first coach to call me. Like I was, I remember I was in the grocery store in Lake Oswego, and he just called me like, "Man, I'm assistant," and, was, and I instantly did my research on him, yeah. started looking up all this stuff. And when I first met him, I knew a lot about him already. Yeah. Like, we hit it off from jump, but we was playing pickup. It was like the first week I was in Portland. They was in Portland, and I was just playing pickup. I was scoring, I was playing yeah. good, but I wasn't saying nothing. Uh -huh. Like not one word. And he stopped the game, and he was like. You got to say 10 words before you get to half court every possession. <laughs> so before I get to half court, I ain't know what to say. I was just saying stuff like, I got ball. <laughs> That's my man. Go over there. I was just saying random stuff. Yeah. He's like, you got to say 10 words before you get to half court. And it's like, it was so uncomfortable for me because I didn't know like other players that well. Mm -hmm. They didn't know me like that, but I had to say something. And I think that was like the beginning of me, like starting to be a leader and starting to like be cool with being uncomfortable, That's you know what funny. I'm saying? So that was like, I always thought that was like funny. Yeah. Cause he was like, you gotta say 10 words. <laughs> and he's sitting over there and he was playing with us, but it would be like the first game and he'd be sitting on the bike and he'd be sitting there watching me, just yeah. waiting for me to say the 10 <laughs> words. And I'm running back, like trying to think of words to say, like, well, what am I supposed to yeah. say? Like, High waffle, yeah. And, uh, it's, that, that's, that is, a, I knew he was gonna bring that up. I would have brought it up if he didn't, but you know, it, for him, it was about being, comfortable being uncomfortable because mm -hmm. it was a new situation. He's a rookie who's going to play minutes. So, I mean, how do you command the attention of LaMarcus Aldridge, Wesley Matthews, Nicholas Batum, those type of players, that caliber of player, and those type of players that have been in and around the league, and, you know, are they going to listen to him and he doesn't say anything? Yeah. It's like, you know, you have to be the point guard, and he... <laughs> It was funny because he I remember the look he gave me when I first said that to him. He looked at me like I had three heads. And he was looking at me like, what? 
Yeah. <laughs> kind of sucked his teeth, but <laughs> I mean, the best part was he just he just took to it. He just mm-hmm. took to it and did it, and it was like, you know, whether I knew what I was talking about or not, it didn't matter. He just was like, okay, this is my coach. He said, let's do it, and, and it, went, it went from there. Coach, why do you think you were picked or chosen to I, come out? You know teams? what? I, like, I, I think a lot of things happen. And I like when they happen organically and things just kind of fall into place. CJ says that, you know, things fall into place and, and they do. Uh, I mean, which, with each of them, the different situations and the dynamic of them being here. And again, Damian came in, number six pick. He's going to be the starter from the beginning. Probably a, a fish out of water in a sense and looking for, you know, someone to help him uh, transition into this situation. And... Fortunately for me and for my, my career, my situation, he didn't have anyone else kind of pulling him to say, hey, you know, look, this, this, I can help you with this, I can help you with that. It just happened to be me. And, you know, we also you know, took a lot of rides together off the court. And I, we like to, we talk about it now, and I know I tell them all the time, when, when we're, when we're on, the, on the court and in the gym and on those lines, I'm your coach. And we're off and away from that. They're more like my younger brother. And our relationships have relationships have grown to that, but being able to uh, have that type of transition with him personally, with CJ, his first two seasons he was injured yeah. for most of the time and didn't play. Was playing behind better players, so he was in a situation where he he didn't know if he was going to ever get an opportunity. And you know, again, fortunately or unfortunately, I just happened to be the guy that was there and working with him and talking to him consistently about certain things and. That helped our relationship grow. So, I mean, you know, sometimes those things just happen organically and they fall into place. CJ, what is the skill set that he provides uh, for you guys that just stands out to you? I think it's his approach. I think his approach every day is consistent. You know, his, his preparation and how he views us as people and as he views us as players. You know, what he expects from us. From a day-to-day workout standpoint, he knows I like to voice my opinion a lot. Mm-hmm. I see. Especially, <laughs> especially on workouts. So... I might come in one day and <laughs> he might be like, let's shoot 900 threes. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm, I'm shooting 44. I'm be able to do half of I'm like, let me shoot 450. And he's like, nah, you started, you're going to finish it. So we, we go back and forth a lot. And obviously, I end up doing it anyway. But he knows how to coach us. He know some days where I'm going to argue with him and then I'm going to do it anyway. Some days I just ain't going to say nothing. Yeah. And I think that's. That's what makes our relationship so good because he allows me to voice my opinion. And then he like, all right, CJ, shut up. Let's work. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we do. And I think from a psychological standpoint, he said it before, like I wasn't playing. So like some days I come in and I be at practice, but my mind be in Canton, Ohio somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just about focusing in and paying attention to the little stuff, the details and simplifying the game because like you said before, I'm creative. So I get bored with certain mm-hmm. stuff. Like we'll be doing a drill and like it was two days ago, it's make five in a row. So I make four in a row, and then I do dumb dribble moves and spin around and shoot step back fadeaways, and I miss, I gotta start over. He's like, why don't you just take two dribbles off and pull up? I tell him, I said, that's easy. Like when I get in the game, like that comes to me easily, but to have to create something out of nothing is, is what I'm gonna have to do at times, and I like to be comfortable with doing that under pressure. So just, just working on making the game simple. You come off, make it easy read, come off, throw the bounce, throw the, throw the pocket pass off dribble. So just ways to kind of sharpen my mentality, even if it's just recommending the book, because he knows that that keeps me intellectually engaged and stuff off the court to where I can go home and be thinking about ways to improve my, my way of life in general. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I have to ask, what's the 900? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it's that? A, it's a shooting drill <laughs> where we shoot, we go around, it's like, what is it, like nine different spots? It ends up. He must have made this up. <laughs> <laughs> they oh, so it's, it's a, a it's bunch a of different no, 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 uh, from from different spots around the arc. So okay. it's like it's like sliding into threes, backing into threes, curling into threes, off the dribble threes, mm-hmm. um, step back threes, catch and <laughs> shoot threes. It's like every way you could be shooting a three from every from every spot. every spot around the arc. We do it. And it, it ends up taking like an hour. Wow. It's like no. nine, and we do it, it after practice. It takes an hour now, but when we, when we first started, it's yes, funny because it. CJ's like, you know, it, such and such is too easy. Ever. Well, I, we had to think of something that was a little more challenging yeah. for them because they can shoot as well as they do. So I, I came up, made up, was made up something, and well, we called did, it bro. nine. We decided to call it 900 because 
at the end of it, they end up having made 900 three pointers. And, oh, and, we, and when, they fir- oh, when they first, when they first, when they first, when they first did it, they hey, take Chris. that home. Man, the first, the first day, it was, I think it was like an hour and fifty something minutes. It took a long time. It almost took two hours. Yeah. It was a long time. This was and after every, practice. So every they, time somebody joined, you got to make seven more shots. So like, usually it'd just be me and him. We uh, got to make fourteen. So yeah. it'd be like seven apiece. If anybody else come and try to jump in, like sometimes Tim <laughs> Frazier would try to jump in with us. Yeah, Tim Frazier. And then it'd be 21. <laughs> so it'd end up being Frazier. more than 900. Golly. Or oh, like no, at man. the end, it'll be like we got to make uh, 23 out of 24, mm-hmm. like on the very last spot, catch and shoot. 23 out of 24. So sometimes we end up shooting way longer like we'll get to 900 and we'll still just be Golly. shooting like it was just a way to, like this it was just to push them to the limit i used to have yeah, i used to tell him like i got radio like come oh on. my god <laughs> like, oh that's a that's a whole <laughs> different story <laughs> that was not your other i don't so care that, about your other no, that, that, that's funny what, a video on you because I, I know how oh. how he is and i could just imagine i used like, to tell him like i got radio man i can't and then he'd be like, you only got radio because you doing this. Oh, and he'd be like, ain't no radio without, without what you doing. Ain't going to be no radio. And they'd be going at it, huh? Chris, that was, that was, I think that was your rookie year or your right, second year. Anytime you got something. You talking about radio was rookie year? No, we would. <laughs> he's just coming up for anything. I mean, listen, he's, no, he's, he was a, really doing he's, a, he's, on, he's, really on, he's really on the board with, with the Players Association now. When he came in, you couldn't tell me that he didn't already come in thinking I want to be on the board with the players so yeah, this this that's... might have just happened but I mean when CJ first got here <laughs> the first yeah, thing I remember we were work, we, one that. day we were working out and Dane was, <laughs> Dane was doing everything and CJ said hey I, I got uh I gotta do my radio show at two o'clock and he Dame, Damien did like this <laughs> he just shook his head and walked away <laughs> and I'm like listen if, if we don't finish this they don't. They're not gonna want you on the radio. They're not gonna want to interview you. They're not gonna want to talk to you. They're not gonna want to. Yeah, yeah get like, This Twitter is all that's gonna matter. This is all that's gonna matter at the that's end of the real. day. Yeah, I mean, he, he he's changed so much. I mean, he's changed Bro, so much. People be scared it's, to it's, work out with him sometimes. It's it's like that's, that, not, huh? that's not true. They they they, <laughs> they, they <laughs> embellish. They just be walking past like, oh, you get. You need to make They going back to the training room. That's not true. They just be like, oh, y'all got that DD workout in the day. That's not true. They gonna look at the gym in there. They going You know what? They they. And you know what, to, to their credit and to their, I, I, I wanted them to try to try things that I didn't think would be maybe humanly possible. Mm-hmm. And they just went to it and went at it as if, you know, as if they were just, you know, nailing a, a, a nail with a hammer into a piece of wood like it was nothing. Just, okay, let's just do it. Let's see what happens. And Again, they go in the locker room at some point and tell some of the other players, "My shoulder's killing me." Yes, we did this, we did that. We but now, hungry, I mean, now, now it's, I mean, now they can do the 900, and you know, it might not even take an hour. It's like bang, 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 bang. We, we don't, you know, we, we cater it now because they play so many minutes now. Yeah. It's just so different. But I mean, it's, it, it, it's interesting how this. How that's grown they don't have to do it after every practice. No, no, no. We okay. don't. It's oh, not even like, like that man. anymore. It's not oh, like that man. anymore. It's, it's it's a little bit different, obviously, because they they log minutes, and CJ will never let me forget <laughs> that he runs the most miles. In I, the saw NBA that, I saw for, that. I saw that. How many I years? How many years in a row is that? It's going on three. Yeah, yeah I see, saw, he, he never lets me forget <laughs> that. So it's like, <laughs> hey, you know, you know, I got all these miles on my legs. Run around. But I mean, our they, playbook, they, bro. Oh, I mean, it, the, the, <laughs> for days. the stories we have on the court, off the court, all that stuff. I mean, they're endless. And, and Dame obviously has a reputation for being a workout monster, mm-hmm. and he works his tail off all of the time. CJ works hard. I remember one though. Your rookie year, I think it was your second year. It might be your second year, your third year. We were in Vegas for summer league, mm-hmm. and I was a summer league coach. You remember this story yeah. before I even go to it? I was a summer league coach that specific year, and. Uh, we're in Vegas. He didn't have to be there, but uh-huh. he came into town, said, we're going to let's get some stuff in in the morning. I'm like, okay, well, I got a meeting before we have our, our team stuff. So let's do it at 7 or 8 a.m. every morning while we're in Vegas for summer league. So I'm meeting him in the gym, and uh, I get there, and you know, I look at him, and I think it was him. I think it was you and Tim Fraser. Yeah. I looked at him, and they 
They look like they just walked in off of from wherever they came from into the gym. So my first reaction was like, this is going, this is not going to be good. And you know, I'm the type of person that enjoy, enjoy having a good time when you're off the court and when you're on the court, it's time to work, get that work done. And then you get out of there and you can enjoy the rest of life or whatever it is. So we get on the court, we start at it and it's a normal, normal type of workout that we would normally do, but it's going to be tough. It's not going to be something that's easy. So. I'm looking at his face and his eyes are watering up and I'm like, well, he's going to throw up. I'm like, he's going to throw up at some point. I didn't want him to get sick, but it's summertime. Uh -huh. It's July. Oh, oh, oh. No problem. <laughs> oh, so we just kept going. We went uh -huh. through it and then I added a couple more things at the end. Uh -huh. of and I'm like, all right. He's like, all right, we done? I'm like, no, no, we're going to do <laughs> such and such. He looked at me like, so I'm like, oh, he's going to throw up. He's going to throw up. I, I could have sworn when I turned my back, he went over to the trash can and threw up. But did you? He said oh, he, he did. didn't. He, he did. said, right. he and, why, and why didn't you? He said, because well, I wasn't going out like this. He, okay. said, he, okay. he told right. me he wasn't going to give me the satisfaction. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's and what's I, think, up. I think they told I mean, you about that. That's what's up. He made it back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we was out, me, me and Tim, we was just kicking it. And we literally left where we was at, went to the hotel, got our hoop clothes, and came straight to the gym. <laughs> where, where was you at, Dan? We don't worry about it. <laughs> I was just out. Now, that's funny, because I fell asleep fully clothed with my shoes on in the no. bed. <laughs> no, you came. Is that the night I came? The, you, no, came, you came in the you Vegas came, later. Remember me, uh, you, it was me, you, Tim, and Bass played one-on-one. -on -one. playing once, yeah. <laughs> and we went and lifted upstairs after, remember? Right, yeah. Yeah, but funny. I just went, I went just because I, I had to prove it to myself. Like, yeah, that's what you Part of me was like, bro, it ain't even no reason to really go. It's like middle of July. It was like yeah. the summer league. And I went, and like when we started working out, I actually felt cool. Like, you I did. actually felt cool. It was like whenever I stopped, though, like. And you didn't look cool. You look like something else. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> I, 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 hey, thanks, Chris. No, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I, I see you, man. Hey, look at he mad now. He mad. I owe you, dog. What's up?